Hi folks, and welcome back to Conan Exiles. This is episode 9 of the Beginner's Guide series, and in this episode we finally do what we've been talking about doing for the last couple of episodes, and that's pack up and move out of our basic little home here on New River, and we're going to head north to more riches and dangers and build an actual base in the new location. So, off camera, I've worked out roughly what I want to do to make my new base and I've crafted up a bunch of building pieces that I'll need to make it. Uh, but we've still got space on the horse to take a whole bunch more stuff. So what I want to do is now I want to craft some benches to take with us. Except instead of using the basic level 1 benches that we've got here, where possible we're going to upgrade and use the improved benches. So if we head in our feats and go to survival again, we can see here under Master Blacksmith you get the improved furnace and the improved blacksmith bench. And both of these will give us bonuses to um, use less materials to craft items and be just quicker. And also they've both got more slots to hold materials in them as well. So we're going to learn that. And we're going to craft up a, a couple. Let's let's start with two furnaces. So we'll have one for iron and one for brick. So if we now look at improved. Did we not even learn it? Let's try that again. We didn't learn it. There we go. Learned it now. Improved. So, to make an improved furnace, we need 50 brick and 100 iron bars. So I've got a bunch of brick in here, so we'll need 100 brick. And we'll need 200 iron bars. There we go. And we can then kick off and craft two of them. And then for our blacksmith, we're going to need another 100 brick and a 100... Oh, got a journey step for the improved workstation. We're going to need a 100 of these steel reinforcements. And what was that? 100 brick as well? And improved blacksmith. Yep. Okay, what else will we need? We'll need an improved armorer bench. So back into feats. Uh, is that under armor? Here it is. Master armorer, which gives the improved blacksmith bench, which doesn't look that impressive when you when you see it there. Let's learn that. What does that require? Uh, it needs 150 brick and 50 steel bars. Ooh. 150 brick. Uh, ooh, getting really heavy now. Uh, steel bars, 50 of them. Uh, improved armor's bench craft. I think we might have to start offloading benches into the horse now. Oh no, I've got rid of that materials, but let's do it anyway. So, inventory, let's put the furnaces, blacksmith, armor's bench. A, and a carpenter's bench, of course. Feats, survival, master carpenter, does the carpenter bench. Unlock that. We're probably going to need a tanner as well. And a fireball cauldron. We'll just learn all them. Okay, so carpenter. is 100 brick, 25 iron reinforcement, and 50 shaped wood. So, 100 brick. Uh, oh, exactly 25 steel reinforcements. And, uh, what was it, 50 shaped wood? Yep. And the tannery, and another 50 shaped wood. Seventy five bark. 
50 brick. And uh, it was twine, 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 twine. Should be a twine here. Yeah, I think it was 50 twine. Uh, to do the tannery. Oh, yep, exactly. Put him in the horse. What do they weigh? 10, 10, 15, 10, and they're 25 each. Okay. Uh, so I think the only other thing was the fireball cauldron, which needs. 100 iron bars and 50 brick. And 100 iron bars. A fireball. There we go. Craft that. Okay. Okay. Do you know what? We've got enough uh, of the brick and I will make... I actually want to have three furnaces, one for brick, one for iron, and then once you've got the iron, I'll have another one that I can use to turn the iron into steel, and eventually steel into hardened steel, etc. So let's just, since we've got the materials, let's just craft our three furnaces now. Get them all set up as soon as we get up to our new location. Because they'll stack on the horse without a problem. Right, there's one more thing we need to make before we go. And that is a sandstorm mask. So at level 30, once you've unlocked the uh, steel, you can unlock at level 30 the sandstorm mask. And that allows you to survive a, stand, a sand storm and it also filters out poison if you're in a poison cloud. Um, so we were actually really lucky the last time when we went for the horses that we ran all the way up to the north of the map and all the way back down again and we didn't encounter a sandstorm. Because if we did, we had no shelter out there whatsoever and uh, we would have been stuck. Whereas if you put your sandstorm mask on, you can breathe no problem at all. So it needs light padding and 45 steel bars. So light padding, we just need some twine. Five twine. That there. Light padding. And we get steel bars. And we've got 65, but we'll take all of them. Put them in here and sandstorm mask. There we go, and we'll just stick it in our inventory. So, in the event of a sandstorm, we can stick that on and we'll get this buff or debuff that means we can breathe and we'll survive a sandstorm without any issue. Uh, okay, right. So, what have we got space wise? Because we want to maximize our usage. So we've still got three slots and you've got one slot left. So what have we got that we could take? So we'll run out of brick and we'll take the steel fire. Oh, we've got steel in there too. Uh, that, <laughs> that came from the taming episode. I put my rawhide bindings in there and went to repair it but accidentally accidentally hit craft all so I've got a whole bunch of bindings but we won't need any of them. Anything in there we'll need don't think so. May as well take the iron bars. We won't need any of those weapons. We'll be heavy now. We won't need any of that. Uh, won't need any of that. In fact, we'll take a stack of leather and we'll take some thick hide just because we can and we'll easily be able to get that up in a new location and we'll take our twine we're going to leave you here 
but we might come back and get you later. Uh, we'll take a stack of brimstone for the moment, but we'll get more up there. Uh, we'll maximise our food, leave all the rest. Uh, we may as well take a stack of that and a stack of that since we've got some left. Okay. Right. What can we put on where? So we'll go in here. We'll sort it by the heaviest, which is the stone, the wood, and the leather. And then we'll go over here. And the twine is 61.5. Wow. And there. Oh, we're still, still too heavy to carry anything. Well, I'll tell you what, you don't actually need your fibre, because we'll get you some of that once we get up there. But we'll give you that, and we'll drop that, and we'll drop that, but we're still way over. Okay, so let's get in here and just drop off. Thick. And, and we can drop no, we won't drop it on the floor, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll put that back in the fireball cauldron. And we'll put... Oh, is that actually us able to move? Hmm. How much did that weigh? 30, and that weighs 32. Okay, we're we'll going to take that, and we'll leave the iron, because we'll be able to get iron very quickly. And we're up there. Okay. We're able to move now. We're ready to go. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take you on follow. And we're going to get on the horse. And we're going to head up to the new base location. Bye, Sink. We'll come back and get you, I promise. And I'll see you when I'm up closer to the location. Okay, so we're not quite at the location yet, but I thought I would just pause here. So if you recognise this area, if I bring it up on the map, we're over here, just beside the jawbone. Again, there's the unnamed city. So we've basically come the same route as we came for the horse. We've came along the river, we've come up around the outside the unnamed city, and then we're headed along here. And this location here, look at the size of this flat area here. It is massive. And in, in the past, I have built a huge, I built what I called the Rhino King Castle. Because uh, just over that ridge there is where the rhinos are. And uh, so I decorated all around the castle with the, the heads of the rhino trophies. And then I killed the king rhino over there a couple of times and used their heads as an archway uh, to make an entrance. But one of the reasons why this area is so great is look at the iron. Iron and coal. Just it goes all the way along, all the all the way around the edge, and then over there as well. Loads of iron and coal. More than you'll come out on an iron and coal run and you'll wear out your pick before you wear out the iron. Um Trees are a bit of a, a slight issue, but there are some over there. You can see there's some over there on all the way over to, uh, towards the edge of Separu there. So there's there's going to be there's a bunch more trees over in that oasis over there. The only problem you have here is there is no water at all. But again, if you go into your feats and look at survival, uh, where is it? Down here. At level 25, you can craft a water well, um, which I think just needs some, some brick and some tar. And you can put that water well down anywhere. So you can look this dry bed, sand bed here. You can put a water well down here, give it a little bit of time, and it'll just fill up with water. And you'll be able to drink and fill your water skins from there, no problem at all. So that this is a this is a great area for a base. There, there seems to be two types of base builders in Conan. There's people like me who like big flat areas to make bases on. And then there is lots of people who will build like up on top of these cliffs. And they, they build really weird bases that use these mountains. I don't have enough imagination to be able to work out how to do that. 
but you see it all the time on various servers and I guess it makes it harder to raid because you can't get up there very easy so um, kudos to you but I, I just can't look at a rock like that and visualize how to put a base on there I like a big flat space and this is a huge flat space that I had a big castle that came all the way down here with uh, breeding areas all the way around down here and taming pens and you could just come out and gather all that iron and you had iron for days but this is not where we're building our base this time so I'm going to head over to where I am okay so we're getting really close now this is the temple quarter of Sepper Maru which we saw the last time as well coming in this far gate here it's that gate into the, past the set temple and we're just going to go straight ahead following this path and out the other side of Sepa Maru trying not to run anybody over to get them aggro on us and take note of all this iron down here because this area here this flat area here is where I'm going to build my base but before I do that Let's just have a quick discussion about base locations and what you should be looking for. So, without a doubt, the number one thing you should be looking for is resources. And this area here has water, just there. It has trees, lots and lots of trees. You've got plenty of wood. And all the way around the outside there, you've got stone. And up on top of there, and down the bottom of there, there is iron, coal, fibre, more coal, more stone, more wood, more iron, more stone. And another thing to take into account, which is a bit more of a long game thing, is just down there, you can see that purple cloud. So that purple cloud is an obelix and what happens is you run up to that it, through the purple cloud which is a cloud of corruption so you can't hang about you run up to there you click on it and it attunes your ba bracelet to that ob obelix there then once we get a bit later on in the game and we can build a map room you can teleport to these different obelix so once you build a map room there, there are loads of them all over the map so if we're here right over on the west side here and the obelix is there there is another one there there's another one down here there is one up here there is two in the jungle uh, there's one where's the bridge just across the bridge here there's one or two in the volcano so if we build a map room at our house we'll be able to teleport and get instantly with our followers and our mount into the jungle without having to ride all the way across then if you build another map room over here you'll be able to click on it and get back to our house if our house is next to an obelix so if you built your house here there isn't one really close you'd have to ride all the way through to this one or up to that one or down to this one so there, there are lots and lots of really good locations on the map for bases that have got lots of good resources but when it comes to map rooms if i can just teleport to there and then i just need to ride up this hill up this hill hill here and i'm back home again so nice and easy so that's another reason why I build here. This this is kind of my number one choice. If you're playing on a public server, there's a fair chance that someone will already have built here. I've played on plenty of servers, and you come up here to do a recce, and there's a big base built here already, and it's like, ah, oh well. Number one slot's gone. There, there are loads of places you can build, and all the way around Set Maru, there's so much iron all around this ridge is all the way around here it's just iron for days this place has got wood it's got stone it's got fiber it's got coal it's got water and it's right next to separate maru so you've got easy access to lots and lots of thralls so once you start taking thralls and it's not that difficult to get up like we saw up past here up into the north 
in get up there for for the higher level stuff up there and this location here the shattered springs that's full of brimstone uh, but it's in a noxious cloud so we will need our sandstorm mask so we can breathe in there but you'll be able to get thousands and thousands of brimstone from there and that's just just down that hill just past that obelix so this is where we're going to build the first thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to offload some of my stuff. So I'm going to park up here and I'm going to quickly craft a box. Uh, tell you to stand guard about here. In fact, we should have materials to make a box with. Uh, I think a box is 100 wood and 12 twine. Uh, and it is called a box. Craft. And we'll just stick a box down. Uh, not enough contact. Come on. There. And then we can offload all this stuff that we don't just want to carry about right now. Uh, we won't need that. That, 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 or that. Okay. Uh, but what we are is we're a bit thirsty and a bit hungry, so let's take some food and some water. Okay, so next we need to tell you to stand guard. And we're going to start building our base. So we're going to take some foundations. Uh, so just for info... This base is going to be pretty much a pyramid using the ramps as the sloped walls and I want the door to be pointing towards Sepa Maru over there. So I kind of want to start it around about here and facing out that way. So I'll take my... Uh, try and get a high point pointing roughly in that direction. Click. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I think it has to be 13 wide altogether. One, two, Getting a bit edge close, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and then at least that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13. Let's just get this out of the way. Makes it easier. Okay. So that's looking okay so far. Uh, we need some more foundations though. Inventory, uh, let's take Can we carry that? Just, yep. Alright, let's see if we can make a... I'm just wanting to lay out the very outline first to make sure it all fits. Because, of course, we can still pick these up and shift them around if if we need to. I haven't been counting. So it's one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine... 10, 11, 12, 13, and then that should match straight across. So you can see that I'm turning them so they all face that way. So it's not really a particular issue at the moment because all this material is going to get replaced, but when you replace it, 
uh, it might be more of an issue of what face is where. So I just want to get it right first time, so that when you replace it over the top, it uh, it lines up better. Okay, so that looks like it works. It doesn't look like there's going to be any high points that are going to stick out of the ground, apart from that tree. So there's an easy way to sort that. And I'm going to get rid of that wood. All carry weight. Okay, get rid of that sticks, seeds, and fiber. I don't need any. Okay, right. So now I need to work out where the middle is. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the middle. So let's make a cross down here. So there should be six either side. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. And there. There. Okay, and I want to put another. Uh, I don't know if it's that. Oh, I missed it. Pick it back up. There. So that's going to be center of the pyramid. So as you can see, the ground floor is going to be quite large. But obviously, being a pyramid, it's going to get smaller as we go up. So, I'm going to fill in the rest of the spaces. So, let's speed it up a bit. Okay, so the base foundations are now all down. So we've got a 13 by 13 square with this little entrance here, which will be our our doorway. And we've got a couple of foundations going up right from the middle spot. And that is going to be to give the floor stability. So this is the perfect chance to properly explain the building mechanic of stability that's in Conan Exiles. We briefly discussed it in the earlier episode when we talked about the repair hammer and and things like that but it's a bit difficult to explain when the building was complete so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put some walls and then a roof okay so so this wall here if we check it 
details, it has stability of 100 because it's directly connected to a foundation and there's no overhang or anything like that. If we then connect a ceiling to that and look at its stability, it has got a stability of 80 because it's hanging out from the 100 so it loses 20% stability. But it's green. You can see it's directly connected to something that has 100% stability. If we then connect this to it, that was yellow because it's connected to something that didn't have 100% and surprisingly enough it has a stability of 60. So if we go out again, still yellow, and that has 40, so it's losing every 80, 60, 40, and then we put one more, but it's red. And it has a stability of 20. And then if we try and attach something else, it won't attach because we've run out of stability. It's got a stability of zero for the next lot. So what we can do to fix that is we can give it some stability by either putting another wall up or attaching a pillar. And now that roof has got a stability of 100 because it's now directly connected with the pillar to the to the, the foundation again. Another trick to allow you to keep building is you can span a little bit further. So if we pick up that pillar again and go another one, two, three, four, and then put another wall down here and then come back in the way. And this is what we were having in the so it was green, so that'll have. So that's what the, that's the the what we were showing down in the the base down at the river was we were never getting down to twenty because it was picking up stability from the other side. So we bring another one, and then another one, and then we got another one. So this one has got eighty. This one has got sixty. This one has got forty. This one has got twenty coming from that wall. This one has also got 20, this one's got 40, and this one's got 60, and this one's got 80. So you can actually have an 8 wide span without using any pillars to, to keep everything up. And you can use that as your way of building. We've got a 13 wide building here, so that's not enough. So what we're going to use is we're going to use this central pillars of foundation right in the center of the building as our column that's going to give us stability to the floor in the middle of the building. But let's hopefully we pick this up. It picks up all the ceilings in between. And I'll do the same with that one there. So what I need to do now is I need to build a wall because we're going to use ramps as sloped walls up here, so putting benches in against the slope wall isn't great. And also this wall will also give a bit more stability. So I am going to put back the ceilings on that guy, and I'm going to take the walls, and I'm going to run a ring of walls, just one round, one in from the outside. And let's speed that up. That's our wall done. So now we need to put these walls back and we need to grab some ramps. And we need to go around here and spin them round with the middle of mouse wheel to get the right way around. And we're going to go around and place ramps around the walls. We're going to leave the corners because there's a special corner piece for that. 
So it's just on the straights of the walls. So let's speed that up. Okay, so that's two high ramps all the way around, apart from the corners, but we've now got these corner pieces that we can spin round and fill in the corners. So I can hope you can start to see the pyramid shape coming in now. Right, so next we are going to put these bits back in here and we're going to take uh, half the ceilings. Let's put that wood on here. Because you can see that's going to be the ground floor in there, but we're actually going to come in at this level. So there'll be stairs up this entrance here, and you'll come in here and go down to that level down there. So first of all, we're going to put in our ceilings, and we can get that the snap pointing. I can't quite see the... Let's put them in from this side. And you can see there it's gone red, so we've run out of stability. But bang, we're onto that. And that now is back to 60 stability again. Okay, so, but we're going to have to have stairs down, let me, let's work out where the stairs are going to go, so let me grab a couple of stairs, uh, let's take, yeah, five stairs, whatever, uh, and we'll give you the pillar, we won't need a pillar at the moment, right, so we're going to come in our door here, and we'll probably, stairs, Let's actually put the stairs here. So that way around. Oh, run right off the stair. Let's take this away and put in another stair. Like that. 
and I think we'll actually do the same at the other side just to make it a bit more except that's not the same as the other side because it's here pick that up and sit oh, I'll have to do that first Okay. A two gap, otherwise, because if you put one there, it turns out that you you bump your head and you can't get down. So we'll pick that up and put one here. Okay, so that's not going to work because that's taken up. So this must be 80, 60, 40. So that should have 20. Sixty, forty. So that one should have 20. Oh, there it goes. It's working now. That's weird. Okay, right. I'm going to fill in the rest of this floor. Back soon. So now we can start working on the next level up. And I just think I should have a door somewhere. Oh, it's in the chest. There it is. Okay, so if we go back over to the front again, in fact, I'm missing a slope wall as well. Uh, let's take some of them and some of them. Oh, well, comfort, but never mind. We can get there slowly. Right. My initial plan was to have the stairs that gets up to the front here to be flush with these slope walls. But what I didn't take into account was that stairs Come on, you get out of the way. Come on. Stairs are see through. So you would see straight in. So I forgot about that. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take the stairs out one block and in order to do that we will seal this up and then I've taken that one ceiling out there and I've got one foundation out the front and I can then do that and that and that and then we'll fill in this hole with the triangle pieces once once we're ready it means we'll be able to walk up our step here and we'll have our entrance right here so our door will be there and we're going to have a one ceiling walkway all round the outside of this level so we'll put windows here not there, though. Yeah. 
there we go. Right, and then if we go back to our slope walls again. So obviously a slope wall would go up like that normally, but we're going to miss a step and go up here. And go around like this. So I actually need another floor in here because this 5x5 five five is going to hold the religious altar that we're going to build. And the plan is, so once you get a religion, we'll, we'll deal with religion in another episode, but we'll, you get an altar and you can upgrade it three times. And when you get the third tier altar, it sends a beam of coloured light straight up at the sky. So the idea is I'm going to enclose the altar inside this level. Uh, and you need a you need a 5x5 five five space to put a, an altar down properly. And then we'll finish the pyramid and the beam will come straight out the top of the pyramid. And it should look pretty cool. Uh, but before I put any more walls up, I need some more floors. So I need to go and get some... I've got corners, no, I need corners as well. Okay, so we've got a little bit of stability issue with the corners right up at the very top there, but I'll work that out once I get the actual religious altar fitted. So next we just have to fill in these little corners here. So we need the sloped wall pieces, both the inverted, so we'll need a couple of them, a couple of them, a couple of them, a couple of them. Right, so what have we got? Uh, so we're going to need an inverted, so number four. Spin them, though. Yeah, so maybe it's a six. Yeah, there we go. Six. And another one there, and then a seven there and there, and then round here we need one of them, and then another one. Uh, so four in there and in there, and then a five there. There we go. 
So now we've got a solid doorway up. Um, we haven't learned fence. We've got uh, crafting, constructions, and we've got fence maker. This might make it look a little bit better. Craft all of them. And then put which way is out that way. stone to finish that off. around here. Two more. Point them in the right direction would be helpful. Because the other thing about fences is that if a uh, attack comes and you climb up here they can't. Oh, well, well, I could. Mm. So you get hurt on these fences, which stops you climbing. So you shouldn't be able to get up and in. But there we go. There's the basic pyramid built. Like I say, we'll finish off the top once we've got the altar built inside it and we can get the stability sorted out for just those corner caps up there. So. Get uh, well, let's hope. Do we have any more sloped ramps? Oh, I've got a bunch of ramps. Right, let's get you following. So, we need to get you around the front and you following as well. But if we take these ramps, we can actually put them down like that so it goes right into the ground. Just improve the pyramid look without it uh, having like that step on the ground floor. Oh, we're out. Do we enough? No, I've done enough. So I need a little bit more just to finish that off. Which I'll do off camera, and I need four more of them. Just to fill in, get out of my way. Fill in that corner. That corner, and one more around here. Right, how does that look? Yeah, that looks a bit better, doesn't it? As that gazelle walks right up. In, oh no, he's not going in the front door. Okay, so... Uh, we can hang out out here. And you can hang out here. What have you got on you? Uh, you've just got crafting materials, so you can have that too. But you should have my benches. So let's start getting them in. Okay, so we'll walk in the front door, which reminds me, we need a door. And then up here we'll have like the, the bedroom will be up here and the 
dining area and whatnot, some trophies and stuff on the walls. And then down down here will be all the crafting area. So one thing we're gonna come in, we're gonna come right in the middle, and we're gonna put our benches down. So if I am in the middle here, that's that. Uh, zoom in. Line it up. that way and another one right beside it that way we'll have blacksmith bench and carpenter bench so we'll have the carpenter blacksmith sorry blacksmith bench right next to the furnaces let's put one about here and we'll have the carpenter in about, we'll have it around this way, we'll have it in the corner, well, not quite in the corner because you'll, there we go, and then the armory stuff will be over here, so the first thing is a tannery, which will be up there, and of course it's getting dark. So let's wait until morning, because we haven't got any light yet. Okay, that should be light enough. Uh, that's miles away from the wall. Let's try that again. There you go. Don't put benches down in the dark. So let's try... That's better. And then we'll put the armor... We'll actually put the... Tanner's bench, well, but we, there isn't an improved Tanner's bench, so we'll make another Tanner's bench, it'll go there, and then we'll have armor on there. Is that all? Oh, I've got a fireball cauldron as well. So we'll stick that down over here. We'll end up probably making two of them, one for steel fire and one for... Um, what do you call it? Uh, stone consolidant. Right, is that all your benches? It is. Is that all your stuff? Uh, you just got some crafting materials. And there we go. That's us. We've moved in. So we're at our new building. And uh, we are got the basic benches in. We've got a few more to just fill in. And then we're going to get some extra resources. And we're going to start our new life up just north of Sepimaru. But uh, that's all for this episode, so thank you very much for watching, as, as always. And if you like the episode, please give it a like and uh, subscribe. And I will see you next time. Bye now. Hello, I'm back again. Just a, a minute after closing off that episode there, uh, I came out to gather some more stone, and... Uh, there's a sandstorm has hit, so luckily we made the sandstorm mask. So, as you saw, you get the sandstorm buff in the, the top left corner, which started reducing my, or debuff, because it was reducing my health. But now that I've got my sandstorm mask on, I'm surviving it now. And I can get my health to go back up again. But yeah, this is a sandstorm, so... Especially at night time, you can end up seeing nothing at all. So, But with our mask that we crafted before we left, luckily, I'm able to come out and carry on mining away with that nastiness going on behind us. And we're still alive. Okay, see you later.